Now, when I mix the cast shadow value, you're going to see that it's not going to be as dark as the apples itself because it's laying on a white surface. And so the local value is going to be lighter. So in this case, the shadow is lighter than the object that's casting it. The other thing I'm doing is adding a little bit of red to this mixture so that it has a relationship to the red that's in the apples. Uh, you want to make sure it harmonizes. One thing I thought I'd mention here about the composition, uh, it's a very static, formal, kind of modern composition. The candy apples actually reminded me of a series of paintings done by Wayne Tebow, the pop artist. And Wayne Tebow is a guy I've gotten to know over the years. He actually even bought one of my paintings, which was kind of exciting. He is about 97 years old and still painting after all these years. So anyway, this is a little bit of an ode to some of the types of subjects that he liked to do. And he liked to center them because he wanted to have a little bit more of a static formal composition as the idea of pop art was taking something that was very common every day and painting it. And so not getting fancy or uh, traditional with the composition, he wanted it to be uh, feeling very regular. Now with these reds, I'm starting to introduce some warm and cool notes. So the variety of the reds that we add are going to be key in producing those reflections that are going to be on the candy apple, especially those cooler tones that are going to reflect some of the ground plane back up into the apples. Now, when composing the sticks, I wanted a slight variation between the two of them. It's important that these little variations also in the shape of the apple, because if you make them a little bit too mechanical, you lose some of that interest. So although I placed the two apples in a similar way, basically centering them on the canvas, I do want to have the little subtle variations in their positioning to happen in order to play the formality against little aspects of informality. Now for the reflections, I'm using a little bit of white in that mixture because I have a white surface that I'm painting these on. And one of the reasons, again, why I used a white surface instead of a gray one on this particular subject is because the white has a little bit more of a modern flavor to it. Again, a nod to Wayne Tebow. And uh, so I had to add a little bit of white to the mixture there because you mix some of the reflective surface with the local value and color that is there. And so I wanted to lighten that up a little bit. And you'll see as I add more white here in the foreground, it's going to uh, help make this area stay really high key. Now, as I start mixing a value for the foreground, I'm going to do something that's off white. I don't want a, just a pure sterile white. And one of the reasons I don't want to do that is because there is a need I have to reserve the very brightest white value for the highlights, the major highlights on the apples. And so this has to go down a notch in order for that really light area to pop out.
Now, as I get a little higher on the background, I'm going to cool it off slightly in order to suggest some depth. And that's where I kind of depart from what uh, Wayne Tebow would do. He would probably keep it in a much flatter tone. And what I want to do is still create some depth to it and a stronger sense of light. Uh, and so uh, he liked to have things a little bit more graphic. Uh, and so that's where, you know, we're doing a little bit of a variation on kind of uh, a theme here. I'm introducing a little Viridian into the background in order to convey the idea of uh, complements and a complementary color scheme with all the red. Of course, we always look for areas that we can put some of the complement in in order to keep it uh, balanced uh, coloristically. So that's why I would add just a little bit of uh, green to it, not too much, just a, a tiny bit in order to make it uh, look nice. Okay, at this point, we're going to start working in some of these reflections. And you can see the color that I'm using there is very similar to what we have in the background color. So it works well also as a tone that simulates some of these reflections that are going on from the surrounding elements back up into the candied apple surface.
So I'm adding a little bit deeper tone towards the top of the canvas in order to give it, again, a little bit more of an atmosphere to it instead of making it really flat back there. Uh, so I'm just getting the nice long gradient back there and going more towards a cool neutral gray in the distance. Okay, I'm gonna start introducing the highlights and these become so important, so key to really making the painting work. And so I'm gonna spend some time just building up the highlights. See, I soften it, I throw it in and soften it because I want to have this really nice shiny halo type, type form to it. So just watch how I kind of work through that to get the highlight to work out. I'm exploring the different shape. I'm uh, softening some of the edges of the highlight and so it'll be just a little bit of back and forth until I get the right type of edge around the highlight. And that takes some time to make sure and, and get it right. <laughs> 